Okay, so here's some review on how to do the dynamic programming and like what do you need to know for the exam? So in the exam, I'm, I'm going to ask you align this versus this. So it will be a one string. So string is the computer science word for like a, a word. You could think about it that way. So in our case, we're aligning protein sequence against another protein sequence or nucleotide sequence against another nucleotide sequence. I didn't teach you the nucleotide sequence. It follows a similar um, approach when you do dynamic programming, but there is no Blossom 62 matrix for a nucleotide sequence because they didn't align a bunch of DNA sequences and see how often does an A substitute for a T or a C by a G. Instead, um, when, what we do do to see in nature how often does this one amino acid substitute for this other one, that's when they generated this Blossom 62 matrix. And there's another matrix just out of curiosity, it's called PAM, which is point accepted mutation that's based on how likely is this amino acid change to this based on how many nucleotides you need to change, change the amino acid. But for this class, I only showed you the Blossom because that's the that's the default when you run BLAST um, or many alignments for protein against protein. Okay, so in class, I only showed you how to align two amino acid strings, so two protein sequences, and we use the Blossom 62 to see how many points do you get for a mismatch between one amino acid and the other, or a mismatch. So here we go. I'm going to show you how you would go about it. So if I say align these two protein sequences, that means you draw on a piece of paper, which I want you to take a picture of and send me after your exam is submitted. You send me my email, that, that uh, picture of your matrix that you drew. So align these two sequences. And I will tell you, do a local alignment, which you're going to use Smith-Waterman, which means your initial conditions will be all set to zero. So here's how it goes. Um, yeah, you guys see in the matrix, right? And I see little hand, yeah. So in this case for class, I said, let's align Nina and Nina. And what that means is that you're going to write one string here and the other one here. It doesn't matter which one goes where. And when I said you're going to use Smith-Waterman, actually, I won't say you're going to use Smith-Waterman. I will say do a local alignment. And then you're supposed to know, oh, that means Smith-Waterman, which means my initial conditions here are zero. So remember on the Nidoven Wunsch, it uses... Um, Starts here it would be zero, but these guys become increasingly negative. And this is one way of trying to stretch the alignment without introducing gaps in the beginning. Okay, so one modification between Smith-Waterman and Nidoman Wunsch is that um, for one of them, the initial conditions is all set to zero. And for the other one, only this one is zero and these other ones are all negative. And when you make these guys negative, what you are trying to do is, I want the alignment to start from the first one, uh, first amino acid here, and the first amino acid here. I don't want it to say that this matches like this third one and thus putting gaps here, because then you would already start with a pretty negative number. Okay, so, I will ask you align those two things. You, you draw this matrix, you write one string here, the other strings here. Then I'll say use local alignment. Then you get points for putting zeros here and zeros here. And then that's when the fun starts, which don't worry, this is gonna be shorter in the exam than it is here. And uh, the parts that will not be bonus points, but there will be parts of the points of for the exam itself will be what's the score for this one cell? So 
I just want you to tell me the score of this one cell. Or maybe I'll ask you the, what is the score for this one cell here? And I will give you this scores of these three. In your chart, you have to figure out um, to get to here, did I go diagonally? Did I go down? Or did I go across? So, yes, Jessica. The part that I struggle with is this part of actually getting the score and the number. Is it possible for mm -hmm. you to do another example just with like two letters so I could see how you do it again? Yes, um, I'm going to, I'm just reviewing from the beginning, but I, I will get to the point that Sydney asked me about uh, opening gap versus extending. So there is another slide in this series that shows you all three calculations. And it, it is kind of a large one, but I'm going to zoom in so we can ignore the rest of the calculations. So, okay, so then, um, yeah, the, the part you guys need to know is, if I give you a bunch of numbers here, and then I ask you what's the score here, this, so this will be blank, you need to know how to calculate that score. So let me give you the, the next slides that will be, we have more things filled in. So here's the alignment, right? And then it starts with all zeros. And then you're like, oh, how did I end up with six here? I looked at the Blossom 62 table and I saw that the score for N and N match is six. And this table here is just a simplified version of this, which I used to give the students, but actually they get more confused. They're like, what is this table? I don't know what you're talking about. So for you, I won't give you, I, I will give you this table. It's actually a black and white one, but it's the scores are exactly the same or pretty similar. So, okay, there is an N and N. That's six points. So the Blossom uh, score for match, so N and N is a match. And then later they'll be like, what's the score for an N and I? So N, ah, I don't get any I's here. So N and I, oh, here. So it would be a minus three. So the mismatch N and I has a score of minus three. So let's see. How do we do this? I'm going to go to the slide that has every calculation and hopefully that will become clear how we choose which way that we decided to traverse the table or each of these scores. So let me go to the example that I have filled in everything. Hopefully it's big enough for you to see, but like, okay, this started with six. How did I decide on six? I went like this. What's the score, the Blossom 62 score for G and G? So then I go, oh, you're here, G and G. And it's like, okay, six. So I'm going to say, if I went diagonally, I'll have zero plus six, that's six. If I went vertically or horizontally, I would have this score, which in this case is zero, minus six plus six that would be zero so so far the diagonal is winning so six is winning and then if i went like this i would have zero minus six plus six that's zero so that also loses to the diagonal so six is my highest score between those if i compare that score with that and that and then i do the same thing here so whenever it's a bunch of zeros, or if there isn't a clear winner between that, that, or that, we don't keep track of how we ended up here. So if you see all of these, so this zero minus two is minus two, but it rounds to zero. That's another modification that for Smith Waterman, if it's something's negative, we round it to zero. This guy that invented that, they just they came up with that either by doing simulations and figuring out what gives you the better alignment. So, okay, let's get to a point where things get interesting. So, for example, um, here, maybe in the exam I give you that 11, that 3, and that 5, and I ask you, this would be blank, and I ask you, what's the score for this? So, so that would be a point on the exam that it actually counts points towards the exam. It's not just bonus. 
So you're like, okay, um, what's the score here? If I went diagonally, so there won't be these lines, right? These lines are after I decided which way to traverse. So if I went diagonally, I take the previous score. Uh, let's see, the square with E and R, that is three, Y, three, that's E and R. I, 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 I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'll go back to that. So in here, I have uh, 11 points. So I always take whatever score is in this cell. So I'm, I'm calculating the score for this. We're going to pretend that this, all of this is blank from here on to the right. So that's all blank because we're filling this out like this, that, 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 that. And then we are here. So then we do, 11 plus, see if I'm going diagonally, right? 11 plus the, the score for E and E. Then I look in the table, E and E is five. See that? So then I'll do 11 plus five is 16. So that's my diagonal. Then I ask, how about if I went um, let's see, horizontally. So that's the second calculation here. I will take that three minus six because I'm opening a gap. So here I'm telling you we get a minus six for opening, a minus, minus one for extending. So a three minus six uh, plus the blossom score of, so E and E is five. So you're always going to take the score from the cell you're coming from, plus the blossom score for those two letters, that so in this case is E and E, and then you are not going to subtract anything if you're going diagonally, but if you're going horizontally or vertically, initially you subtract six, and then if you're extending, you subtract one. There's an example here, but I'll, I'll get to it in a moment. Okay, so, if I went diagonally, I get 16. If I went horizontally, I would get 3 plus 5, that's a blossom 62 score, minus 6 because I'm opening a gap if I'm going horizontally. That's 2. Okay, 2 is lower than 16, so I reject the, the idea of going like this. And then I, ex I explore the idea of going vertically. Then I take 5 plus the blossom 62 score five. So that E and E is five. Minus zero because I would be opening a gap vertically. And then that's zero. So I compare these three scores and I see that 16 is my highest score. So 16 is the result for this cell. And then I, and then I figure, okay, I got 16 by going diagonally. So I keep track of that. Then um, let's do this next two because that's where I'm going to answer Sydney's question on when is it minus six, when is it minus one. Okay, so um, I this would be blank. I want to know how I ended up here. So I go, if I went diagonally, I would have five plus the blossom 62 score, which is E and A which is again, how often are they, these two amino acids, um, how likely are they to substitute each other? And the positive scores mean that they're more likely than chance. The negative scores mean that less likely than chance. So E and A, E and A minus one, okay, see the A there. So they are less likely than chance to substitute for, for each other. Okay, so I get that five minus one, which is the blossom 62 and E and A, that's four. So if I went diagonally, this the result here would be a four. And then I say, how about if I go horizontally? Then it's 16 minus one, that's the blossom 62 score, minus six because I'm opening a gap, then that's nine. And then I see how about if I went vertically. 
I compare these three and I'm like, oh, the nine wins. So the score for this is nine. Yeah, that's the next thing about how, do, how about when I extend it. So the highest score is nine. And then I'm like, how did I get this nine? By moving like this, which means that I opened a gap, right? And how do I know I opened a gap? Because I was coming diagonally and then wah, I changed my direction, right? And then I'm like, oh, now I'm going horizontally. So now I opened the gap. My first change in direction is when I'm opening the gap. And then here is when you, when you um, extend the gap. So I do these calculations again, diagonally, uh, horizontally, and vertically. And uh, now this is, this is the kicker, which I'm showing you because um, I wanted you to see what does opening the gap mean. But it's in the exam, I'm not going to make it this tricky, just so you know. OK, so how do I know I'm op extending the gap? Because here I, was, I, I just oh, here opened. That's my first horizontal in this stretch. And this is my second horizontal. So instead of minus 6, I do a minus 1 here because I'm extending it. So let me show you in the the alignment see this would be an opening gap this is an extending gap so when you open a gap that's your first hyphen and then when you're extending the gap then that's that's your second second hyphen and maybe there would be more if seeing alignments with that so let's see what else um so yeah here i opened and here i extended the gap but uh, then you have to find the highest score like on this corner and uh, to calculate the the alignment score it will be the summation of the all the all the scores on the path so you look at this this corner here and you're like okay 20 plus 15 so, so that's the thing i told you that uh, the brother and sister going back home right they got to the end then this somewhere here. So let's try this one. Then you do 20 plus 15 plus 16 plus 11 plus 6. That's one alignment score. And since I went diagonally always, then that means I didn't open any gap. So here is the, the alignment would accept a mismatch here. So this alignment has a better score accepting a mismatch than, for example, opening a, a gap here or opening a gap here or opening a gap and extending the gap and then here you'd be opening the gap and extending the gap so these scores are lower than that score which means that the best alignment is the one not opening any gaps for this example so let's see what else about that yeah and then there were questions Let's see, can I talk about extending and opening a gap? Yeah, so in the homework, I, I gave you an example of an alignment or two different alignments, one that opened multiple gaps that were short and another one that was opening fewer gaps but longer gaps. And so I wanted you to um, speculate what is true about that. But if you are opening many gaps, that are short, uh, then the, the penalty for opening a gap is probably lower than when you open very few gaps but make them longer. And uh, if you guys go into this field, you're going to know that this is called a fine um, gap opening, so a fi fine penalties. If you don't go into this field, then don't care, don't, don't even listen. Okay, uh, questions about the numbers of some of the boxes when you finish explaining. And, uh, okay, so Daniel, maybe you can ask that. So let me just see, Kendall asked, so out of the three paths, the end score is the path is the highest total? Yes. So you have to do all three paths, and then you find us the highest score. So this comes with the that idea of dynamic programming, which is you have a big problem What's the best alignment between that string and this string? You break it down to sub-problems, which is let's just align one letter at a time. So this is the sub-problem, which is broken into three problems, right? If I go like this, like this, like this, you find the optimal solution. 
So like, here's a good example. We could really have gone like any of these three ways. The optimal solution is this. And then you keep that optimal solution for this. And so each of these boxes has the optimal solution for the alignment between that one ladder and that one ladder going either um, diagonally down or across. So you're trying to see what is better to accept a mismatch, in which case this aligned diagonally, or is it better to insert a gap? That's what that is answering. When you say, am I going diagonally or down or across? Um, and then the overall solution is the summation of all these points. That's what's called the alignment score. And then the other solution that you see is the, the alignment itself. So there's the score and then the alignment itself, which the way you build this is T and T. How did I end up with T and T? I went diagonally. Oh, that means that T aligns with T. And then E and A, how did I end up there? I went diagonally. So I'm accepting the mismatch between E and A, which is what I, when I say I'm accepting, I'm just saying, yeah, I know they're not the same, but it's still better to line them up like this than to open a gap. So I think, Sidin, now I, I think I answered all the questions from the chat. What, what would you like to ask me? Yeah, so I just had a question about some of the numbers that you got in the box. Hopefully, can you see my point? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, I can. In particular, so it says mm -hmm. 11 um, minus 2, but I have it that E and R are like the number from the blossom chart are 0. Mm -hmm. So it would be like 11 minus 0, and then it would be 11, and then you're opening that gap. So then it would be minus 6. So wouldn't it be 5 for that box? Hold on, E and R. You are right, the E and R would be zero. So where were we again? E. Yeah, so it would be okay, it, this it, one. So that minus zero. Right, so then that would be, oh, you're right. That would be 11 minus zero, still minus six because right. we're opening this. Then it would be five, right? Yes, it would be two points more than that. Then this would be five. Okay. You're and right. And then this, that this, would change that. Uh huh. Yeah, and then this one, um, I have it being, yeah, you go from the five, so it'd be five and mm -hmm. then minus one. But then since we already accepted this opening the gap, wouldn't it just be minus one? Yes. Oh, wow, you are so meticulous. You know what? I'm going to give you bonus points for all your attention because you see <laughs> this minus one? I had it initially as minus six and a student picked on my mistake. And I'm like, you know, you're so you're so careful. You already earned the points for this. So good for you. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. And then you you would be right. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. So I I need to redo this now. In, in this can actually change the overall uh, numbers here because this way, let's see. This would be five. So that changes this to five. Oh, good. Thank goodness it doesn't change. So this would be five plus five, which is the E and E minus six. So 10 minus six, that would be four. Thank goodness four is still lower than 16. So this guy stays good. So that doesn't change. And then here you're right. This would be five minus one is A and R minus one. Yeah. And then this would be a minus one. Good point. So five minus one, four minus one, three. Then yeah, then the overall score here would be a three. Then you would go, how about from here down? Okay, good. Thank goodness it's not gonna change because this will be three minus one minus six is still going to be lower than nine. So yeah, but you know it it could be that a mistake I made here, here would change everything as as you see it compounds and I, I did this on purpose to show to you why we delegate this to the computer. <laughs> so now I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, but good for you. Um, 
So as I said, you already earned your points for the dynamic programming because you found mistakes. And, and also I commend you on the courage to say, you know, you, know, you, you very nicely put to that I made a mistake, which that's, that's uh, good for you because one day you're going to be in the workforce and you're going to have to thread this delicate <laughs> uh, situation where your boss is wrong, but you have to very nicely tell them that. So yeah, kudos to you. So guys, um, do you have more questions about the dynamic programming part? Or we can address other questions from the homework.